when a person dies, the, the actions that they have taken in life and the relationships that they have had and the things that they have built live on past them. Welcome everyone to this edition of Tiny Pulpit Talks. We're coming to you from inside the minister's study. You're here with all of the ministers. We're so glad that you're with us. And we get this question a lot. I get this question a lot. It's, a, it's an important yeah. one. Um, for Unitarian Universalists, what happens when we die? Is there, I, I used to get a question, do you believe in a soul? And mm -hmm. I used to say, well, if there's something that Aretha Franklin is the queen of, then I believe in it. And she's the queen of soul. Uh -huh. Yes. That wasn't really that helpful an answer <laughs> for this person who was asking, but they're related questions. Mm. What do you, I mean, I'm curious, Beth, in your role as our uh, Minister of uh, Faith Development, what do you mm -hmm. tell young people here when they ask what happens when we die? About what happens when we die? Well, I mean, you know, like your response immediately goes to Aretha Franklin. My response, my first response is, well, none of us really know <laughs> yeah. because that's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, even though none of us really know, I think what we do know is that um, some people might call it our soul, other people might call it our spirit or just when a person dies, the, the actions that they have taken in life and the relationships that they have had and the things that they have built live on past them um, and continue making a difference in other people's lives and in the world. And so for me, that's really what an afterlife is, is the ways that when you are alive, the, the things that you do um, and the difference that you make, how that lives on. Yeah. Is that what you tell people, Daniel? Generally. I mean, yeah, it would reflect mostly that. Mm -hmm. um, I take a slightly more Buddhist perspective, which is that your habits mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. contribute to the future. Um, not, some, not, not even in ways that you would predict. Uh, so not necessarily in the mm -hmm. relationships and the people who you raised or something. Mm -hmm. Um, a kind of so my my feeling is there's kind of a cosmic battle for all time between sort of compassion and good versus evil and and destruction and <laughs> and so what we do and say and you know participate in matters toward that that thing that's happening mm -hmm. but has no absolute timeline for me. So, you know, that's a little mystical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a mystical question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I mean, I don't believe, I don't, basically I say I'm agnostic on the afterlife, which <laughs> is what I've been quoted as saying mm -hmm. um, here. And we'll continue to say that because mm -hmm. we know we will die, but we don't know what's, what's next. And people who are absolutely certain about what happens next, um, I don't understand. I don't yeah. know how they uh, believe that, except they usually go to some kind of scripture, um, which is fine. People can have all those opinions, but mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, um, I think it's a lot of fiction. I think it's so. You know, do I hope that I will see my family members who have passed someday? Sure, mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't have any problem with people having that thought yeah. uh personally i don't think that's what happens mm -hmm. um, i think largely we go away and that that's okay too yeah mm -hmm. so getting yeah. getting like okay with complete annihilation of one's life and self is the goal <laughs> yeah and attached to that cultivating habits and things that have an effect on the world mm -hmm. that's also the goal mm -hmm. yeah so that's mm -hmm. how i understand it mm -hmm. yeah what about you? What about you? <laughs> Do you have any? I was <laughs> so hoping that wouldn't be the question. Uh, no, I. I think for me, 
I had a friend likes to uh, said she passed away, but she used to say, "I have a deep and abiding faith that comes and goes." <laughs> and yeah. I should say that I I'm very similar, I think, closely to what you say, Daniel. That I don't believe that there's any kind of spirit that lives on mm. that I know about. Mm. Uh, if someone proved to me that such a thing happens it wouldn't surprise me though that's what i say to people so maybe agnostic mm. about what happens afterwards is right that um i don't have any belief that it's not true either that there isn't yeah but i haven't seen any evidence of it and i don't have that feeling um what i can say is that maybe it's sort of a cloud of witness or communion of saints or whatever that is that the more people that are close to me who die the closer or better I personally feel about the end of my own life, mm. Mm. which I think maybe comes from my upbringing, my Catholic upbringing of more of a belief in, a, in an afterlife of mm. communion mm. with elders and with ancestors. And I've seen some stuff at deathbeds. I mean, we've all been with people mm -hmm. as they've died. And um, I've seen some experiences that make me think something is happening I don't know exactly what it is, but I've yeah. seen people reach out at the last moment and then die. That makes me just wonder without any real sense of proof. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably yeah. what... Yeah, I mean, an yeah. agnostic, we should be clear, means we just don't know. Right, right. that's what I mean. It yeah. doesn't mean we don't... We, we know it's not. We just don't know. Yeah. And that's, I think, an important place to, to be uh, with that. Because, you know, on the other hand... Um, not so much at the deathbed, but months, years later, I've had dreams and yeah. experiences mm -hmm. and and almost visions, like in real, like I, you know, I think I'd said this in a sermon once, because my dad was a dentist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had this mo moment when my dentist was reaching into my mouth of him disappearing, and my my dad was there, mm -hmm. leaning in. Interesting. It wasn't abstract. This right. is not like mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I couldn't mm. touch like go, oh, dad, yeah. you know. But it was a moment. Yeah. And I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. and I don't really need to question it. Right. Yeah. It was also a reminder that complicated and loving relationship I had with my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what is important to me because that helps me be more loving. And think about the complicated relationships I have. <laughs> yep. And that's it. That's enough, you know. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if you've had those moments or you don't have to have had those moments. But mm. certainly in dreams, I've had sure. I mean, many conversations with my grandparents who've, who've gone, you know. Oh, yeah. And I don't know what that is. That might just be all in my head. And that's mm -hmm. okay, too. <laughs> like, I don't do it. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> so. I... Yeah. I have a similar thing. I think this is one of the things about our faith that I love is that because we have a almost the sense of rationality, when I have those dreams and those visions and those moments, I don't chalk them up to some like uh, supernaturalness. Mm. In a way, it's almost that I see it as natural. It's almost mm. the connection is more real for me because I don't hold these supernatural beliefs mm -hmm. so when i have when you're talking about your dad i was thinking about my grandmother who i can hear her voice mm. perfectly at times mm -hmm. in things mm -hmm. and it's like and people call my mom her by her name they have the same mom they have the same name mm -hmm. and sometimes because my mom's the oldest in her generation Mike, her first cousins think I'm their first cousins because we have an enormous Irish family. Okay. So it has this interesting connection. Yeah. Anyway, uh, to get into that, yeah, but, yeah. but I'm always feeling like drawn closer to her mm -hmm. in moments. And I've had dreams about her and, and my grandfather too. So. Well, and what I'm hearing in both of your stories is that there's an element of mystery mm. and like being okay with that mystery. Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't have to have an explanation for all of it. Yeah. There's a, this comes up in India actually with the Unitarians there because they have a very, they actually have a very clear idea oh, that yeah. the dead stick around for a few days <laughs> while they're getting comfortable with the idea that they're dead. Interesting. And so they sit in vigil for three, five, 
days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they every, every one of them will tell you stories about seeing the person experiencing the you know and they're you know they're they, some of that I think comes from their indigenous roots mm -hmm. and some of it is translated through their Unitarian experience but in their religion um, we live on perpetually forever mm -hmm. and ever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that experience is real. Yeah. And for me, it doesn't matter if it's real or not mm -hmm. real. It's real. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's the kind of cool thing, you know. And so um, I think we can learn from, from them. That's mm. when we go, when we take the pilgrims, this is, you know, a different conversation. When we go to India, we have this conversation with mm -hmm. them about what mm -hmm. happens after death. Yeah. And uh, many times the pilgrims that from here, go I believe the same thing I just never said it out loud I which hear is that another thing <laughs> so yes. many times yes. Yeah. yes yeah it's like it's one of those things because as a culture we don't really talk about it that much mm -hmm. but when we do in our positions we talk about it all the time and we start to hear how common and how closely held some of these beliefs are that have just kind of sprung up in different ways and yet have commonalities yeah. beliefs and experiences I mean like the yeah. vision of your dad you know yeah. as your dentist like I think more people than we realize have yeah. these kinds oh, of experiences, yeah. but they don't talk about them very much. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, one of the places we do talk about them, and mm -hmm. I wanted to say something about this, is this church has a, an incredible tradition of memorials. Mm -hmm. Like, just in the ones I've seen and things I've heard, and the beauty of that, I, I haven't experienced that in other mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. And I know both of you <laughs> are born Unitarian, and I yeah, wasn't. Right. And <laughs> so I don't, it's almost that. Like, Maybe I need to say something about the difference, but it's it's just done with such care here, and it's very beautiful to be part of and to learn from both of you how to do that. Um, can you say something about how you were taught to do? I mean, what people yeah. don't know is that like, yeah, 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 this is the only place I know where we call relatives and friends. Mm. It's like a journalistic approach to really yeah. learning someone yeah. and their yeah. life before we do that. That's I don't think that's common. Mm. I don't know. But, I have no idea. Yeah, I treat it like mm -hmm. being an investigative reporter. I want, <laughs> yeah. I want to hear from people yeah. who, you know, had experiences yeah. with the dead person mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and different perspectives and yeah. different areas of yeah. their life. You know. And we don't shy away from who the person really was. And, yeah. But we yeah. also, like, make it about the person, not yes. about the religion. And I think that's the main difference people experience yeah. when they come mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. is you know they're not coming to a memorial to get evangelized they're coming yeah. to really honor the person yeah um, with in all their forms right and you know like we don't make every person a saint mm -hmm. because that's another downfall of a yeah. lot of memorials and a lot of faiths yeah and yeah. that can hurt people who didn't experience that person as a Absolutely. saint and then it feels like dishonest in some way and finding that truth and that mm -hmm. you know I mean, we've all done complicated memorials yeah. where we yeah. do that. Yeah. It's hard work, right? Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's... Beautiful and important work, too. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I, I recently have, out of both of your kind of coaching on doing this, I've sometimes made deals with people I've talked to. It's like, I need you to tell me some things, and I promise I will not <laughs> repeat them in the memorial. But... <laughs> It has helped me shape the the scope of how yeah. I talk about someone mm -hmm. by making that covenantal promise. Like, I will not tell the story, but knowing that they were a real troublemaker underneath <laughs> it all just gave me such better idea of the yeah. person. Yeah. You well, know? Everybody, yeah. we you know, starts out wants to make the person the saint. I know. Yeah. You know, and so we have to try, yeah, we try to get below the surface on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it creates a beautiful... not to do damage or to no no know, no, like no call no, no, somebody no. out for some harm they did or something, but, but to just to say to say like you know, like this is who the real person was, right? God. And sometimes hearing that truth spoken in the context of a memorial can be healing for the people who are there at the memorial. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now we're into memorials. We <laughs> yeah, we went what happens yeah. after little... you die. Well, <laughs> well you a have memorial service. One of the things <laughs> the first <that> thing. <laughs> It's one of the things that happens after you die. Uh, well, yeah, I'm glad we could talk about this. I think mm -hmm. this church does a really good job of, you know, the navigating grief class and other ways mm -hmm. that we look at this. 
uh, I think that there are a lot of ways that our society in general could do better about being comfortable with death and being mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope this does something for the mm -hmm. folks listening yeah. uh, to know that you can come and talk to us about these questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we really care about this. We think about it a lot. And um, the ministers in your life are probably the people that have the most experience uh, with this particular aspect of, mm -hmm. of life. So we want to hear from you, uh, whether through other channels or here in the chat. But I know it can be a sensitive topic, but it's one that's really important to us. Mm -hmm. And we hope it's important to you. So um, it feels funny to say like us and everything after this, but you know. <laughs> like us and do that and uh, review the podcast. And we're so glad that you're with us today and we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.